Welcome to You're Doing It Wrong with Coach PJ. Today I'm going to show you a very common core training exercise, which is the flutter kicks and scissor kicks. People love to do this exercise because they think it's really training the abdominal musculature, but in reality, they're putting themselves in a very unsafe position and they're not training their core very effectively. So this is what people normally do for flutter kicks and scissor kicks. They lay on their back, they put their legs out, and they just kick them. And they do 30 reps or 50 reps or some kind of excessive reps. And you notice in this position, because she's not training her core in the right position, she's got this huge arch in her low back. I can get my hand all the way underneath her low back here. So she has this huge arch in her low back. You can relax. What that's doing, and you notice if you ever do this exercise, you probably feel it a ton in your hip flexors. Because the hip flexors are doing all of the work here. So you're really training the hip flexors when you're trying to hit the abdominals. And because the hip flexors are under so much tension, the psoas muscle attaches to the lower back. It attaches to the vertebrae in the L4, L5, it attaches to your lumbar spine. So you're actually creating a ton of tension pulling on your lumbar spine, pulling, into you, pulling you into this really bad position. And that's why if you, if you have a bad back, or even if you don't, you probably notice when you go do 100 flutter kicks, it doesn't feel great on your lower back. So again, really ineffective way to train the abdominals and you're putting your lower back in a really bad position. So I'm going to show you a simple correction that will make this exercise much more effective. All we're going to do is put her in a neutral spine and pelvis position. So she's going to tuck her tailbone off the floor. She's going to press her low back flat to the ground. Now she'll bring her legs actually straight up. From this position, she's going to lower them only as low as she can without allowing her lower back to arch. So she should be keeping pressure on my hand. Just holding this position alone right now is putting a ton of stress onto her abdominals because her abdominals are responsible for making sure her back doesn't go into extension and her hips don't tilt forward. So because she's trying to get into that tilted position, her abdominals are under a ton of stress right now just maintaining this position. Now she could do some real slow flutter kicks, alternating her legs, and she, can, she only has to go as low as she can control. As soon as she starts to get into that tilted position again, where her back starts to arch, she's going too low and she doesn't need to go that low. Where the purpose of the legs moving is to add a dynamic position to put stress onto the abdominals. That position is trying to pull her into spinal extension and into an anterior tilted pelvis position. Her abdominals are responsible for resisting that position. So she's putting a ton of stress on the abs by resisting that position. Any type of movement of the leg, she could bend her knees, touch her heel to the ground, bring it back up. She can extend both legs out straight. Whatever she wants to do, she can scissor her legs back and forth, over and under. Any movement of her legs here is just creating a new dynamic challenge and a new stress on her abdominals to maintain position. But if she loses position, she's losing the work of the abdominals, it's all transitioning into the hip flexors and pulling on her spine, so it becomes a really ineffective, stupid exercise that's just putting people in a bad position and you're not actually training their abs. So that's a much more effective way to do the, the uh, scissor kicks or the flutter kicks that's actually going to be training the abs the right way. You can do a lot less reps and get a lot more uh, work done in that safe position.